Gate has responded to IFF code. IFF read and accepted. Data transfer complete. Welcome to the Memory Core, uh, the art episode. Do, 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 do. So this is something that we talked about a couple times, and uh, I think you know, one of the impetus was that there's just so much really awesome examples of art across the history of Battletech, and um, what really set me off was when Ill Clan came out, and I saw on Reddit some commenter said something dumb yeah. like, oh, well, at least Catalyst can afford good artists now, as if there's never been any Actually, good art ever. It was, oh, they can afford competent artists now. Yeah, and that, that was that was like shockingly dumb to hear because everyone wants to pull out the bad examples that they can cherry pick from thirty five years almost. Yeah, of it's the game. It, it's easy good content to make yeah. fun of something. Yeah, and it's it, it's lazy and it's not it's not fair um, because there's some really really great examples and that's the point of this episode today. And I think, well, then, like I mean, you said, I mean, you were going through it and I was going through it. I definitely learned a lot about my taste. Yeah. And I think there's definitely going to be multiple episodes because we wanted to keep it, you know, maybe 10 examples each before it balloons into a two hour thing. <laughs> yeah. And very quickly we're like, oh, there's a lot of art to pick from and we're going to have to narrow it down and we're going to need more episodes. Yeah. So our, our ideal format is what we're going to do is we're each going to pick up to 10 pieces of art. So there is a little bit of nostalgia in it. Um, but we're going to basically look at it, maybe describe, you know, what we like about it. Yeah. Um, you know, if we know like any history of the art, maybe bring that up. Mm -hmm. um, and what we're also going to do is we're going to take some fan submissions. So if you leave a comment for maybe a piece of art we didn't cover, uh, we'll include you in the, the next video. Um, I know our last video kind of came a little bit out of nowhere. So we got uh, one fan submission. And what we'll do is, too, is we'll do the fan submissions in the beginning. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least at this, at this point it works. We've, we've organized the, the presentation uh, by artist. And the fan, B. Phoenix, also thank you for your contributions, B. Phoenix. Uh, he picked some real bangers, man. I mean, they're, they're good examples. And they're by uh, Doug Chaffee. Mm -hmm. And I, they're really good, really good examples. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so, all right, first one, fan submission. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, this is the Fall of Terra uh, cover. Uh, this is a really cool scenario book. Um, I will say that the battles are a little bit on the big side. Uh, they they kind of get to this point where there's this sort of bloat in these scenarios that are they're designed. I mean, they're really huge, and so, whether or not they're realistic to play, although maybe better without the strike versus Battletech. But it, it was really cool. And I imagine for the fans at the time when it came out in 1996, it was probably a really big deal to be like, oh, wow, we actually get to have battles on Terra now between the Word of Life and Comstar. Yeah, at this point in time, Battletech started to evolve from being your... I mean, it always kind of was like a beer and pretzels pickup game. Mm -hmm. But scenario books, like you said, have started to get a little more bloat. And I, I think if you think of it out of um, out of context, maybe people are getting a lot better at mm -hmm. playing the game, so they, you know, What's found like faster better? ways to have these yeah. larger battles. Um, but the yeah, I mean, the cover art itself is yeah. pretty damn good. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, what B Phoenix said for this one and the next one, which is the uh, thirty twenty five uh, revised TRO. Is I mean for him it's like the scale, the details, and the max, the lighting, and the way the light bounces off of them, um, just the details all around. And yeah, I mean Doug Cheffy with this one and, and Third Twenty Five, I mean he really shows his stuff. I mean this Black Knight on here looks amazing, especially with the light bouncing off of the the torso plate, the wrecked Banshee on the ground, the Nexus in the background blazing away, and how its weapons, you know are a light source and they they highlight the armor panels yeah. on him there's even the minor details around it you have the silhouette of the catapult in the back yeah getting blown up yeah it's kind of small on this screen but i i recall that i'm pretty sure that's a catapult back there yeah so it's it's really cool and uh yeah and 
just you know, all around and it, it's not just flat. And I, I think I don't want to call out anything in particular, but I know there has been some examples of newer artwork that just seems incredibly flat from its lighting to the backgrounds. And, and even here, just the sky, the gradient from that blue down to uh, like a sunset with the moon coming up, it's really, really gorgeous to look at. Um, and you've got, you know, if you're in your color theory, you've got, you know, your blue and your orange, which are complementary colors, and they, yeah. they make things pop. Uh, so yeah, all props to to Cheffy for uh, doing this. By the way, I don't know if we're gonna get all these names pronounced properly because I've never yeah. actually heard them uh, spoken by the actual artist. And I know uh, Doug passed away a few years ago, so um, if somebody can set the record straight on some of these pronunciations, yeah, we're all for it. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna move on to our, our next one. As mentioned, um, the palette is actually a little bit similar to yeah. the last uh, picture we it's saw. Blues and oranges, yeah. Just a lot darker. Um, but like the last one, there's a lot going on. You got the infantry man running in, you know, below it. The mechs actually look menacing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that atlas looks <laughs> freaking terrifying. Um, but in the background, you can see in the bottom left, because you pointed this out to me last night, Dan, but you know, in the bottom left corner, you can see those infantrymen running away from the awesome. Yeah, it really sets a mood. Yeah, it's really cool. And just, yeah, the, the, the I don't want to say grim dark, because that's more of a Warhammer thing, and it's never really been Battletech's thing, but sort of the, uh, the darkness and the dirtiness of the 31st century and what conflict looks like in that era. Yeah, Battletech has a lot more of a, a grit to it. Yeah, it's it's a grit you know? without the the satire and parody of Warhammer. You know, mm -hmm. um, Warhammer makes a lot, especially forty k, makes a lot more sense um, when viewed from a parody standpoint of what they're trying to do, especially from like nineteen eighties Margaret Thatcher United Kingdom. Yeah. Um, so Battletech definitely does its own thing, and, and this is just a grungy dirty look i just kind of noticed a little bit but it, almost at like the center right it looks like somebody fired a flare yeah yeah <laughs> something's exploding something's exploding in the air it's very cool <laughs> it's very cool so yeah b phoenix thanks for the uh contributions on what your favorite examples of art are because they're they're awesome yeah can we all just marvel at the chrome awesome in the background too yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's good stuff <laughs> Okay, and um, we had one more. The, this one's more me. Uh, but yeah, City Tech 2nd Edition, man. <laughs> that Victor is, to me, it's iconic. The, I, I remember City Tech 2nd Edition is a pretty big thing that got me into Battletech because at the time I was living in Billings, Montana. And, I, you know, as you know, I got in kind of the, the tail end of Battletech's popularity. And I remember calling uh, FASA out of Chicago. And I remember I asked them for third edition, and they're, I, I didn't know too much about the lawsuit because I was young. I don't think any of us knew until a couple years afterwards. We're like, where do these mechs go? Yeah, and they, they told me it wasn't available, but they said they had City Tech uh, second edition available. So I already had fourth edition, and I was like, yeah, shoot, cool, send it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, um, you know, for me, you know, my introduction to Battletech was the cartoon, and then I remember it was at the cartoon finished. Uh, my friend in the neighborhood who also watched it was like, oh, look what I got. It's called City Tech. And, you know, the local hobby store has a copy of Battletech, too. Um, so that my actually introduction to Battletech as a board game was uh, City Tech. Um, and the cover artwork was always great, although... The actual box set, you couldn't quite see it. I was always thinking, like, what the hell is the Victor shooting at? Like, here he's getting, you know, shot in the crotch by this elemental, and he's just <laughs> shooting at nothing. Um, and then when you see the fuller version, you can actually see there's an elemental being totally creamed by that gauze cannon. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's something great. Again, again, orange and, orange and blues, mm -hmm. a little bit you of purples it. and reds. Uh, so it's almost like they're fighting, you know, Dawn. But yeah, very cool. Again, you know, futuristic city. Yeah, it's great. It's great. 
I like the Federated Commonwealth logo. It's like tiny on it too. The element, like everything just stands out. I like, I actually kind of like how, what is it with them and awesomes in the background? Yeah, you know what? But, <laughs> There's going to be a couple of awesomes in this presentation. They show up in a lot of places. They, they really do. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, I think it's cool how they kind of match in color as well. Um, I don't know what it is about that chrome look. It just, it makes these mechs just stand out. Even if you look at the cockpit of the Victor, man. Yeah. Like that that cross lighting, lighting. that's like going on. Well, and, and I'm not sure how Doug did a lot of his art compositions. You know, how much of it was airbrush, how much of it was pencil, you know, what was the mediums he worked with. But there really is something to be said about something that's drawn by hand and not just done on a computer. Uh, and, you know, things change, you know, uh, you know, cell shading and, and filling in can, can really speed up the process. And it is a real, probably a, a really big economic benefit to, you know, doing something on the computer. But man, you know, when you can do it by hand and the way you can do stuff with lighting and the highlights and the shadows, man, I don't know. Some of this stuff's really hard to beat. It's really, it's really, it's really fantastic. There's a lot of stuff going on in this, in this image. A lot of stuff. Yeah. City, City Tech 2, um, that was, that was a box set that got me hooked. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it. It, the other reason was because of Mech Warrior 2 Mercenaries, because the tech in this box basically matched that game. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like the, what was it, Helm Memory Core? Yeah. They got discovered, all that new tech, which they, I think they kind of retconned it now. They've changed it a little bit, uh, The uh, especially with the 3039 Brush Wars book, or no, the Historical War 3039. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and other other things, it's it's a much more gradual introduction of technology than kind of what we were given with the twenty year update in TRL thirty fifty and the Blood of Kerensky trilogy. Okay, so yeah, that I believe that is it for Doug. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, this uh, is all you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, I, this came up before in a previous episode. It, um, some of our, our favorite depictions of art. And Earl Geyer uh, has done a lot for the IP. Um, and in fact, he did all the artwork for um, the third edition rule book. And I think the first couple printings of the City Tech second edition rule book um, in source books and scenario books. Um, some of Earl's stuff can be look kind of weird. Some of it can be a little bit, I think, quote unquote, off model. Um, like there's one, I think, in the, the second edition of the Battletech Compendium of like a Shogun. And it's just, it's like all sorts of not right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it looks like goddamn Humpty Dumpty. Um, but when he's on point, he's really on point. And uh, there's something about this Phoenix Hawk that just speaks to me. I mean, you got the sun setting in the background. You've got, it could be either burned out trees or it could be, you know, in end of fall, beginning of winter when the leaves have fallen off and mm -hmm. you've got this strong directional lighting because the in the foreground or facing towards you the mech is in shadows and the surfaces facing away from you are lit up by the sun and so that directional lighting is really strong usually it's the other way around yeah yeah again like that's one of those things i think is missing some some of the newer art is a lot of these guys could do a lot of really great stuff with lighting um but for me this piece is just so moody and evocative and like I said, I would I would come home from school in fourth and fifth grade and just pour through these books over and over again, looking at the artwork. And of course, you know what was happening? Well, it was fall. It was winter. The leaves were off the trees. It was like, you know, what's it like to be in that battle mech? You know, at the same same time of season when I'm looking at these images, and it's yeah, something about that just really speaks to me. I really like that piece of artwork. Yeah, Gear has a, a real nice tone of his art. Mm. Yeah, and we're going to see that in the next one. Um, this is also from 3rd edition, and it's just... One of the things that Earl does really well is he makes the battle mechs feel used. Um, you'll see his art, and you'll see these pock marks and these dents, um, it's great paints, um, all over them, they, they, it feels like they're all a little bit beaten up, like they're actual war machines. And just this one, like the violence of the Griffin bashing the Shadowhawk. And I think earlier in the book, there's an image of a Griffin with its right arm blasted off. And that could be very well be the Griffin's own arm and he's clubbing the Shadowhawk with. I mean, you don't really know. 
Um, but just, you can tell, like, there's dust in the air, you know, yeah. there's debris flying everywhere. Um, it's in, you can, you can visualize it and you know you're in the middle, like, you're just after the swing and you're in the middle of this motion, this range of motion and this action, and it's really cool. Like, you can put it in your head what's happened and how it's happened, and it's just, it's just awesome. You got your infantrymen in the bottom right watching. I think that might actually be a, you know, mech warrior escaping from his mech is it yeah yeah but it's just and that, and that might be a quick draw it's hard to tell but yeah i think it's just it's just great I, this is just yeah yeah it's just so brutal and it's it's very very cool very very cool one thing i like to do um which you will we'll see it in uh, later pictures that we picked out is fasa had this I don't know. I mean, they probably told their artists to do it, obviously, but there's little like pop culture references. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I, I don't know if we have a lot of them in this video, um, but I, I know in the next one, some of the other art that we did choose has it. Yeah, we'll point it out. Um, but yeah, like th this actually looks intense. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's very it's, cool. It's actually intense, and I know. A lot of people have problems with proportions in that, but it, I think it does its job. You guys might hear my cat, Carrots, meowing in the background. He just agrees. He just agrees Carrots with agrees. Us. Yeah. Mostly because he wants to eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. So we got... Ah! There you go. <laughs> yes. 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 Laubenstein. Yes. Good stuff. So... You know, the image on the right is... Okay, I'm going to let my cat in so he can do what he wants to do. He just... He wants to help. Yeah. Hey. What do you think, dude? What do you think, buddy? Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, the image on the right, it, you, know, you can see where it's a little bit grayed out. Um, and I think part of that's because this is from the scan from the Curita source book off of the Catalyst store. And so I don't know if it's an artifact from the scanning... Uh, or what exactly happened? Um, he might go bully stormy, so I think I'm gonna put him back outside. Okay, time to go back. Time to go back out. You said hi. Time to go. Time to go. There you go, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what is it about about these two images that really stick out to me? Um, I think it's because we see this sort of proposal for what the future looks like, what the architecture of Battletech looks like. Um, it looks nothing like what we've got, you know, currently. Especially on the left. Yeah, and it just, it, it's, it, I don't know if, if Laubenstein is getting his inspiration from, like, Mobius and heavy metal stuff, or if this is something he kind of developed on his own, but I think you, you kind of want to see what that world looks like. You want to explore that world, like the domed cities and everything. And when you come over to the infantrymen, this mixture of science fiction and fantasy that, that kind of was present in the early Battletech stuff that is not really there anymore, at least as far as I've noticed. Um, you've got this armor that sort of uses probably, you know, design elements and decorations. Like that, that lizard thing as part of his helmet may just be molded on there or that may be an actual creature that was on that plant that was then taken and taxidermied for the helmet. Maybe it's this pet. Maybe. Well, it could be. It's just resting on his head. <laughs> um, but to me, that just looks so very, very cool. Looks and, very Jim Henson. And it's just sort of... That, it, uh, it, it, it adds to the to like the setting. Like, this is how they dress. This is how they look. Um, and it's, it's something that I, I, I do feel is missing uh, in a lot of the, the more recent stuff. And it, to me, like, that is something that's very, very, very cool. And we're going to have quite a bit of Laubenstein in this presentation because he's just so goddamn good. Yeah, that, to get back on the Jim Henson thing, I just see Labyrinth mm. with um, the uh, animal that's on his head and even on the Star League logo. Yeah. Like, I know that's like a dragon, a, a dragon yeah. but it, it looks like kind of like furry a little bit, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of looking real close. Might just be yeah. the quality that we have, yeah. but that that's yeah. Like the one on the right, I I could see where you're. Um, would you say he was inspired by Mobius? Yeah, yeah. Like I could totally metal. see that. Yeah, 
I mean, one of the things I'd love to see, and this is maybe where 3D printing does come into play, is, and we'll see more of these individuals throughout it, um, throughout the slideshow, but, you know, Battletech never really had a strong, you know, tabletop, like, you know, like they had battle troops, you know, but they didn't really have a good, like, RPG representation, and yes, you know, Ralph Partha and now Iron Wind has, again, those 25 millimeter Mech Warrior uh, figures, but there wasn't a very big, broad selection. And it just sort of makes you wonder, you know, a character like this, like how awesome would it be to get a 3D sculpt of that, of that guy and, and paint him? Um, even if it was just like a bust from like the torso up or the waist up, uh, that would be really cool. And, uh, you know, it, it would be nice to see something like that represented in another 25 or 28 millimeter scale. It would be interesting. I mean, you can even think like maybe it was an artist in the universe that made that on the left too. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's cool stuff. It's cool stuff. Hell. Awesome's back. Hell yes. Hell yes. I know this one's actually showed up in fourth edition too. Oh, we got a, we got a typo, man. Oh man. Yeah. It's supposed to be the, that's supposed to be the uh, House Steiner source book. Okay. Um, so we got, we got, we got a couple of typos we're going to, that, that are in here that we'll have to, you know, put addendums on or, or fix on the presentation. But, uh, yeah, it's actually the house Steiner source book. I think it's like page 21 or page 11 or something. So this goes back to like what? 87, 88. Mm, yeah. yeah. I think all, all of those books are yeah. in 88. Cause I think even the periphery book is in yeah. 88. Yeah. But this, I mean, this image has been used over and over and over again in a lot of different places. And it's, um, yeah, I mean, this is just awesome. <laughs> You know, to not to make a pun, but it, do you like the imprint of the guy at the bottom of the foot? It's so good, it's so good. <laughs> but it, what's neat about it is like you could think it's a blood spatter, but it could even be like like just like ashes of like the dude sticking to it or something. You know, all that heat has to go it's somewhere. Like, it's just like, <laughs> you you have this. It's action. There's motion. There's details. Um, you can tell this awesome is in the middle of combat. He's running and shooting and you know, the, the right arm PPC is cooling down and it's just smoking from having been fired. It, yeah. I mean, this is great. This is, this is just, I don't know if there's a better awesome picture than this one. That arm looks like a drill claw, man. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. But yeah, I guess I guess Battletech can only now, only just now afford competent artists, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll fix the uh, that with the uh, YouTube's like annotation system. So yeah. That should My be bad. My bad, guys. Yeah. Yes, this is also good. Um, I just really dig the the characters. Um, this one actually took off of the. Uh, with the fans of Jeff Laubenstein um, Facebook page. And so I think it's a scan that Jeff did because on the bottom left corner, you can tell it's sort of you know, fuzzy. I like it's a little bit out of focus, but yeah, I just, all these characters, th this is just great. You know, you can tell like, these are some guys, uh, you know, in the periphery, they're, they're a gang. You, maybe they're NPCs you run into. Maybe they're a bunch of player characters. Um, they all look different. They're all individualistic. Um, they look like they want to cause trouble. <laughs> yeah, it just it's just great. It's just great. And they're probably all people that Jeff knew, and he just used them to model for him. Um, but yeah, this is what it's like in the periphery, yeah? Like, the one dude's got his lizard pet on his shoulder and, like, a cat. I like his fur coat yeah. underneath his armor. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah, they all look different, and... But they all, you know, they're all from the same crew, right? It's all done by the same artist, but they're all dressed differently. The Bill Robinson definitely has that style. Like, the way he draws, um, like, knee pads and, and, and padding, um, you can tell it's him. The way his lines are somehow both straight and curved at the same time. Um, like, you know it's, you know Jeff's style when you see it, but this is, this is really good stuff. On his shoulder, is that an upside-down skull? It is, yeah. It is. I was going to say it kind of looked like... Uh like jazz jack rabbit or something yeah. at first when i saw it um yeah i mean even the armor panels have like some dragon ball vibes too yeah i mean it's it's, it's very cool stuff it's very very cool stuff 
I'd like to know, um, because uh, obviously, like the the bigger guy and them, like they they look like cartoon characters. Mm. But you have um, on the left uh, the guy with like the goatee. Um, you know, and the ladies look a lot more realistic. Um, I wonder if they're actually like based on people he's known. Yeah, I mean, you can you do kind of see when Jeff draws stuff. Um, he'll draw women fairly cleanly and with a bit of realism to it, and then he'll draw the men with the you know this craggy, knobby skin and and stuff like that. Like he he definitely has different approaches to it. Jeff also did a lot of the uh, portrait artwork in a couple of different source books. I know Great Death Legion and the Kell Hounds, that was him. Um, and I think those portraits look great. Um, but yeah, yeah, Jeff's a, de definitely a master. Definitely a master. He is part of the master class. Yeah. <laughs> there uh, we go. Okay, so this is something I learned about myself when looking through the art. Um, I had to calm down a bit because a lot of the uh, images I was choosing were from Mike Jackson. And there's probably a good reason for that. Well, and also I should say props to him because Mike actually got the missile arrangement on the Atlas correct. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Um, I, I almost feel like we should look it up real quick, but Mike is actually an artist that he's, he's won awards. Um, he, he's definitely your competent artist. Yeah. <laughs> um, but th this one is from fourth edition. I've always found myself looking at this picture. Um, I it's in the uh, introduction to Battletech book. I think I've just I've looked through that book so many times. And the, what I particularly like about his style is that it has like a almost like a digital slash oil painting vibe to it. And it's, to me, it's like just real enough. Mm -hmm. It looks just real enough. Um, well, he definitely has, he has excellent command of light sources because mm -hmm. you can tell just looking at this, this is what sells it. What makes it look so good is, you know, that welder's torch is the light source and there's a shadow of the man uh, on the Atlas, but you can see you know, how bright it is on his helmet and then how it fades out and the shadow of the atlas against the hangar, the the capturing of lights at different facets that face downwards. Mm -hmm. Like he 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 knows what he's doing. And I always like to sense the scale too, mm -hmm. because I the new scale we have with uh, battle max and vehicles, it's a little wonky, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, I like the idea of like the size of that welder compared to the Atlas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Atlas, that Atlas is sitting there about about what 35, 36 feet tall, maybe 40 at most. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, like it, it seems. It's also really neat to see the actual like inner workings of the Mech 2 yeah, and yeah. like this kind of presentation. Yeah, um, yeah the, the, I, I found that I actually, if I had to pick my favorite artist in Battletech, it is Mike Jackson. And you'll see, because I had, I had a couple up. of these picked out. Yeah. I, I really had to fight to, I, I feel like a cheat, or, or fight to keep my selection of them real low. Yeah. Um, but I kind of cheated, too, uh, because I had to pull something from the collectible card game. And... I hope, I hope Travis from Renegade HPG is listening because I know it's his bag. Is this I know, the, this, is, this is his bag, but I always love this card because, <laughs> one... As a person who likes to fire them off, I would never put them in water. <laughs> you just don't do that. Um, I like the idea of the urban mech finally getting his win. <laughs> <laughs> and it is the like perfect, perfect place to get his win. You know, in a you know, like a like a like a marsh, a bog, and you have this this fire moth just making a bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> the arms are still up. The the, the <laughs> irony that it, his uh, he's got Blitzkrieg written on the front of his. Oh mouth. yeah, it, you know the Blitzkrieg came from that LBX that flew out of that urban mech. Yeah, um, it, go house out too. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is ironic because like what is that fire moth even doing on that end of the, you know, of the inner sphere? But you know whatever. Yeah, he's a little lost. He um it might have been that miss jump. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, yeah, like uh. You know, even like the arm like steaming as it's like going in the water, showing like 
you know, battle mechs actually do generate heat. Um, I, the reflection too. Yes. I think is really nice. Yes. Especially with, um, the urban mech. Like it's not just like, the, it's like the scale of it. Like it's smushed. Yeah. And you can see the, you know? and the, there's still like some shadow in the water, the way it, it ripples around, mm -hmm. uh, the max as stuff's happening. It, it's yeah. A lot of details, a lot of details. Yeah, and it, I think like um, the only only thing is like Geyer, like there you can see like some wear and tear on his mechs too. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a little more subtle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, th this one really stood out to me. One, they got the '80s band on there, Toto. Uh, <laughs> so there, there's a little bit of a pop culture thing, um, but there's a lot of emotion going on in this picture. You know, she just got her ass handed to her. You don't know by what. <laughs> because it, and it is a stone rhino, so it had to be something pretty bad. Yeah. Could have been artillery, could have been, you know, an ambush. Um, the other thing is... You definitely feel how cold she is. <laughs> you definitely do. And I I like his... Um, like the, the way he draws people... It's, like, realistic enough. Also, I just noticed this now. It's, like, she has, like, a little dot on her head where, like, like either, like, it was a neural helmet contact or maybe it was at enhanced imaging. Could have been, yeah. <laughs> I, I think the other thing that stands out to me is that, I mean, you could look at this and, I mean, yeah, you see her trudging through the snow, but even if that wasn't there, you know that snow because you're getting so much visual information from the person uh, in the scene, like you know, she's mm -hmm. cold, and therefore you assume it's snow. Like that well, could just be sand or something. You know, and all the conifers in the background, the yeah. pine trees. Um, yeah. That that's a really good, uh, really good touch. You know what else is is really? There, there's two things I want to point out. One, she's not loaded with tattoos. <laughs> oh God, yeah, the tattoo she is thing. not loaded with freaking tattoos. And originally, when I saw this, that's what I thought the flowers were at the bottom. But it, it like, who drew that there? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's her own cool personal suit. touch. Yeah. Uh, the the other thing I like about it, too, is I know there's a lot of flack with neuro helmets and what mech warriors actually do dress in in their, their cockpits. This is more in line, like, of what I've imagined. Maybe not with the fishnet. If that is fishnet, I'm, I don't I don't think it really is. I think it's just, like, a mesh. Yeah, I think it's supposed That's to be a mesh. Like mesh, cool mesh. Yeah. Um, but it's... Because I when when I imagine like if you wanted the modern portrayal of what a mech warrior looks like today, I would think Under Armour yeah. would be the ideal way to do it. Under Armour and like you know like she has her holster with her pistol in it, her laser pistol or yeah. you know whatever, and then you see like the um, the pipes going into her arm for like the coolant. Yeah, you know. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned the tattoo thing too because I mean I don't want to get the impression that you know we're against tattoos. It's not that at all. It's that, especially with a time of war and then the time of war companion and some of the other stuff, there is this like overemphasis on all these characters having these generic tribal tattoos that I think mm -hmm. were even falling out of favor and disappearing even before a time of war was printed. Mm -hmm. um, and so to, to not see you know, lame, generic, tribal tattoos um, is refreshing. Yeah, I was just about to say it's refreshing. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it, 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 the tattoo thing will definitely be something that dates our, our art today. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's one of the, the, the nice things about, about this is, you know, especially some of the other things is that it's different enough and it's futuristic enough that it's not going to be dated anytime soon. I mean, maybe you could say the art style has changed, but... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, seeing those tattoos in the time of war, it's like, wow, that dates that book to the early 2000s and it shows. Yeah. Yeah, I really want to see this colorized. That would be cool. And I, that, I, I tried to look at He actually has a DeviantArt page. Hmm. He has a lot of his stuff in high resolution. But I, I really wish that this was colorized. I think it would look really good. There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, this is the one I wanted to, to talk about. So yeah, she's not wearing a neural helmet, but that, that's we'll let that slide. Yeah, we'll let it slide. Um, it could have it could have fallen off, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, there there is so much just 
awesome to this damn picture without having an awesome in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the neon, I, I, it, it, the neon like cockpit going on <laughs> almost on the um, the hunchback yeah. always stood out to me. Um, I also like that you can see the mech warrior in the Zeus, like her her panic, her aggression, everything just going on at once. So there's a lot. There's a lot of tension in that scene. She's doing whatever she can to get that hunchback off of her. Mm -hmm. it, it, it seems like you know she has her five kill count below yeah. her cockpit, but it's about to go away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the run is over. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it, there's like the dent in the torso. Uh, from the Zeus punching, I like all the little details in the Hunchback. You know, open sesame with the Auto Cannon Twenty. Even the boar, like you got the spiral inside of the boar. That's really cool. That's really yeah. cool. Um, the the Zeus is a big mech. You know, so it's like what 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 actually like pulled that Zeus down to that that Hunchback's level. Yeah. So it's like, is this Zeus like kind of like falling forward maybe? Or is on its knees. You know, on its yeah. knees, you know. Um, even in the background, you got, you know, obviously there's like a battle going on in the background. Um, I mean, considering the cockpit of the Hunchback, though, it could yeah. be a rave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> could be a, a Solaris battle. Who knows? Um, the, the other thing I really like about it, too, is that the cockpit of the Zeus actually looks like an aircraft or like helicopter cockpit. I think that's really cool because you got like the caution tag mm -hmm. on the side, you know, like the caution tape mm -hmm. at the uh, bottom of the cockpit. Um, I like the illuminated buttons inside of it and the dials going on. It's not like this because um, like the, the new representation of cockpits, like especially in the video games, are just like a bunch of things just thrown in there to make it look like a cockpit. Yeah. This actually looks like everything has a use inside of it. Yeah. Um, and another thing that's in the lore too is there it what was there supposed to be in a cockpit there's an actual locker that they could keep their personal belongings right in. right like behind the uh, behind the the seat and you, or in like uh, there's, and there's like the rumble seat as mm -hmm. well and you yeah. kind of you kind of get that in this picture mm -hmm. um and you know then all the things supposed to be in there too is a toilet <laughs> and i think it's like roomy enough that you would think like i don't know it could be in there <laughs> Um, a little bit of humor, so yeah. toilet humor. Because yeah. I think the idea, I mean, obviously is that she should be able to walk around behind the seat. And I think that, I don't know, it does look a little bit tight, but I think there is enough room that maybe you could squeeze back there. I mean, obviously the whole top hinges up. Um, by the way, I, um, this may or may not be something that, that, um, a lot of you know, but I think Dwayne Luce at some point mentioned the idea that, um, in the chest of the hunchback is supposed to be the cockpit and the head is just supposed to be full of sensor equipment. And I think Mike Jackson tried to kind of compromise with that because you can see on the chest, the red window, because mm -hmm. um, he's done that in a couple other places like the urban mech um, and the, the fire moth, you can see yeah. the, the redness with the cockpit. Um, and I, I mean, you know, realistically that, that can't happen. You know, I mean, obviously we have torso mounted cockpits, but from the, the tech that was available in 3025, that's not the case. Um, but I, I kind of like how he's sort of splitting both hairs with that. Um, it's and cool. Again, his sense of scale too, with, um, I, I think the, the mech warrior could be a little bit smaller mm -hmm. inside of the cockpit of the Zeus. But again, like that, that's what I always imagined. Well, because MechWarrior Online kind of got a little bit crazy with it, especially from what I understand, MechWarrior 5. And then you showed me that whole mod that was dedicated to you know, decreasing the size of these things so they're scaled properly. Yeah. Because the old sense of scale that Battletech had like this, I generally agree with more. And it's not it's not nostalgia that's yeah. driving that. It's just, it, it has this, like, it just feels right. It feels appropriate. Because, you know, 10 meters is about... 36 feet. 36 feet is plenty tall. 36 feet is plenty tall. Um, you know, you don't really need more. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, man. Props to Mike Jackson. Because I, like I said, going through all of this art, like I subconsciously, like I, I found out how much I actually like, like this guy and like his presentation. Mm. I, he's definitely part of the master class. Yeah. There we go. Tom Baxa, he's another one that I like. He has he has some Earl uh, Earl Geyer vibes to him when it comes to the grittiness of his mm -hmm. pictures. But I also like his. Uh, I mean, look at the arm. 
just like it, it's not coming off in like one big chunk like the video games like the depicted like the, it's coming off in pieces yeah you know yeah. it's like it's shattering like some something hit that that just tore it to shreds you know um even in the background like the lighting up there is that like a drop ship is it is it a city? Is yeah, it, yeah. Is it and cityscape? The, the way it reflects off of the head of the atlas. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, it, it's like the, the entire top part of the atlas is like the cockpit. Like it's just yeah. a huge dome up there. I actually really like his uh, his atlas. Um, and, and again, like I, there's something about like an oil painting vibe that I just, it, something just draws me to it. I would definitely love to know how this was done. Uh, you know, how we decided to, to, to do it. And again, you have these strong light sources. You've got the lights in the background reflecting on the head. You've got the ambient light, that yellowish ambient light across the Mac. You've got sparking and, and fires from the damaged arm and how it highlights mm -hmm. the, that side of the Mac. You've got the medium laser firing and how that highlights the arm, the, the side of the torso and the hand with that lighting. Um, it's really, really good stuff. Making sure you're getting your lighting right and your light sources, you know, matching. It's it's really cool. It's really cool. You got this sort of light blue yellow contrast that works very well together. Yeah, it's like I'm looking in the background too. Like, is that smoke? You know, is it like a could be like a sandstorm? Yeah, or is it a fire? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is it a fire? It's just I I like the um the use of it's almost like a brownish like yellow. Mm. You know, I. I don't know. There's something about the way he used the colors in this that just really stood out to me. Plus, it's fourth edition. Yeah. Can't Battle wrong, Tech fourth right? edition. Yeah. I have a huge bias towards that box. <laughs> but yeah, Tom, Tom Baxa is a favorite of mine. And it, this is another one, too. Okay, so when we were talking about pop culture, Faso was based in Chicago. And if you look at one of the signs below the Centurion between the legs, it actually says Cermak on it. And Battletech or uh, FASA, I think the address is 4800 Cermak, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so obviously this guy has a, I don't know, maybe he's backhanding the, uh, the office <laughs> that day. <laughs> well, because uh, what was it that they would do? I think, um, well, there was a, there's a Lobenstein piece of art that has um, this, you know, you know, spaceman, just like a shriveled skeleton. I can't remember which book it's in. But it has a name tag on the helmet, and I think it was supposed to be one of the writers from FASA, and it was just sort of a, not a dig, but just sort of a play, you know, mm -hmm. like, he did something to, to Jeff, and Jeff was like, okay, I'll show you, and um, it's cool to see little pop culture stuff like that. Yeah, and I, it, with this picture, I'm not really sure it's it's Baxa, but if you, if you look at, like, the bottom center of it, it does look like he maybe wrote his name down there. I just – I wasn't able to spot it. Well, we, we kind of figured out it was Baxa, too, because when I was flipping through your copy of City Tech, there was art in there I've never seen before because you have one of the last printings of the City mm -hmm. Tech 2nd Edition. Um, and this some of this art was new for that printing, which was uh, – surprising um yeah, yeah i have the javelin in mind you have the wolfhound I have the wolfhound so it, it, it never came city tech never came with the the wolfhound but i think for a hot minute it was planned to do that and then when i went to production they went with the javelin and so in one of the copies of city tech i have the city tech second edition they in a loose sheet just slipped in the javelin in there um so yeah yeah but yeah i like um See, for, for a minute, too, I this is why I said Baxa has kind of like an Ed Gare vibe to him, mm -hmm. because I, I seriously thought that was him, because it was between, I think it, it, Baxa, it was between him and Ed for the inside art. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, like, I, what I really like about it is, like, he's backhanding the building, you see, like, the shrapnel, like, the windows shattering, um, you have the, the, you know, airplanes flying in the back, or I don't know, maybe it's a bird. <laughs> yeah probably an airplane more than likely um that's you know sears tower in the background or at least one of the towers downtown yeah. um you have like it just the grit on the armor like it it's a war machine you know like it it's been it's seen better days you know and i like the i like the missile panels opening up too yeah that was something that was on old um 
Battletech representation of the Centurion. I don't care, man. That cockpit's cool. That block, that big block. Yeah. With the Mohawk. They need to bring the Mohawk back. Yeah. Okay. And th this is another one from fourth edition that always stood out to me. Um, I don't think Todd Lockwood has done a lot of art for Battletech. I don't think so. I don't think so. Not that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm aware of. I mean, maybe in this sort of mid nineties era, he did more. I'd have to go and look. Yeah. Um, this was also the cover of one of the Fossa catalogs. Mm -hmm. I have that catalog. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's like, um, like Mike, uh, Mike Jackson, the Zeus in here. I like how it's the same color, but again, the mech warrior in the cockpit. I love that scale. Mm -hmm. It's just that when I imagine a mech warrior in a cockpit, that's what I see. I don't see this like little dot, <laughs> you yeah. know, next to this like gigantic war machine. Uh, but that, that sticks out to me because like the, the tension is there. Like you can see the fear in his face is like, yeah, it's a Jaeger mech, but that's, you know, that's ballistics firing at you. Yeah. Yeah. He's getting his, he's his up. fucking arm off. Yeah. And um, Hey man, again, lighting, you know, your, your source of lighting is very well defined because the shadows in the Jaeger mech. Mm -hmm. You got the infantry running in the background under the Jaeger mech. Uh, the Jaeger mech looks great in this too. Yeah. You got the, uh, like, if you look at the missile pods on the Zeus, you got, like, the one brown missile hanging out in there. Um, you got, you know, battle damage on the Zeus. You know, I, I think blue is just, like, the color for the Zeus in, in fourth edition. Yeah, I mean, it seems like that's the case. Yeah. It really it really is, because, like, there, there's three parts where, and we'll touch on the last one, where the Zeus is blue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, another thing, like, you got caution panels on it again. You know, like that, that yeah. real subtle on its uh, missile arm. You know, the, it, it makes battle mechs feel like like aircraft, and I always like the aircraft aesthetic to them. And hey, man, again, your oranges and your blues. Mm -hmm. Orange and blue, man. Yeah, 20 years before Hollywood started doing it for every movie poster, oranges and blues. Right? But yeah, like it, it, Todd Lockwood, man, I want to give him props. If anyone knows, I, I, I actually want to know, if anyone knows any... Battletech art he's done outside of this, please put yeah. it in the comments. And it's possible he did stuff for like Shadowrun instead. He might have. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I like th this is just an image that always stands out to me when I think of a game. Ah. <laughs> ah. So, <coughs> yeah. So, funnily enough, um, this one was, it's uncredited on um, Sarna, and I didn't know who did it either. And we had to go looking around, and I think. In the bottom right corner, you see a signature, and to me, that looks like it matches Steve Venter's signature from the stuff in MechWarrior First Edition. So we're crediting this to Steve, um, and I hope we're right. I think we are. Yeah. I really yeah. do. But man, you can't go wrong with this catapult. I mean, this is just, I mean, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. and all the details, even like the, even the way that the, the medium lasers are, are set into housings, um, it's just great stuff, man. The missiles may be a little bit on the big side, like, but then again, the catapult doesn't have a lot of missile reload, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, it has a the mech. Like when you talk about walking tank and battle tech, I don't think of the the big bulky aesthetic that we have now. I see this. Yeah. This looks like a tank to me. Yeah. You know, like if you were to put treads at the bottom of this thing, it would look like a little missile carrier. But it, yeah, like. Again, with the um, like the the aircraft cockpit aesthetics to it, you know, it, like that's that's what stands out to me. Like you even got if you look on the missile pod at like the bottom left, mm -hmm. you got the little caution sign. Yeah, you know, um, I I actually miss this version of the catapult. I miss the catapult. Well, you know, you know, I, I got that uh, the, all those those plastic minis from eBay just yeah, recently. Yeah, oh my god, so. you. Um, I showed that to you. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> help myself. Um, You're I want, welcome. I wanted my fatless. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this is just, yeah, this is great. It's, you, you know, it, it's to me, it definitely, again, it, it's, it speaks battle tech because you, you, one, it's not just the battle mech, it's you're on this alien world. You know, you've got this moody background, you know, it's at, at night. Um, it, it's definitely like a planet that doesn't look like anything that we've, we've seen before. I think it's a big dipper in the background. That could be. Maybe on accident. Yeah. Kind of looks like it. Um, but yeah, it's just, it, I mean, it's just great. It's just great. 
Yeah, it, what was interesting too is that originally I thought Steve did the covers for all those Omnimech boxes. Mm-hmm. And I remember we were looking at them and it it looked like on, what was it, the clan box with the Timberwolf on it? Mm-hmm. That actually looked like an armor cast model because there wasn't an actual signature on it. Mm-hmm. And I think that says a lot to Steve's style because if I can look at this and then look at that Timberwolf and think that he drew that Timberwolf, mm-hmm. you know, I think it shows a lot of his aesthetic that he, I think he really nailed the the walking tank aesthetic of Battletech. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. He he knew just just enough bulk. Just enough bulk and just enough detail mm-hmm. to to really show off these, you know, these giant walking war machines. And again, the pilot in there. I love that scale. Yeah. It is great. <laughs> this one always stood out to me too. Um, it's not a <laughs> real favorite, but I I really like the Battle Cobra. Adam hates Clan Steel Viper. Well, it, well, I, I mean, I don't <laughs> mind Clan Steel, Steel Viper. I mean, I love the fact that they lost their complete, absolute fucking minds <laughs> during the Wars of Reaving. Um, they went full on crazy, wacky fascist, and they stuck with it to the end. Um, but yeah, Dan actually has a full trinary of battle cobras that he's painted up. So the dude, the dude loves his battle cobras. I, I, I am, them. I am a little disappointed that they're all just the same variant and you didn't mod every single one of them. Do you know how much work that would be? Well, no, I put it in your head and you're going to do it. I am going to do it. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but there, there's something about the battle cobra, the new cockpit on the, on the new guy just, just doesn't do it for me. I, I like the old, uh. The diamond eyes, you know, or the triangle eyes. I mean, sorry. Um, it, the other thing that kind of got me about the Battle Cobra, too, before I get more uh, into the art, it reminds me of a model from um, Descent, mm. the old DOS computer game. It yeah, was that yeah. green robot with, like, the spike arms. The, 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 the angles on it, like a low polygon count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, I mean, they, they got the job done. It was just enough detail, and the game was great. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like, this, this photo, like, I think we're really... Or photo, um, yeah. This this real photo of a mech warrior. Yeah. Uh, th- this art, what really stands out to me is the Steel Viper mech warrior has this snake vibe to her, because mm. um, she has like the kind of the greenish hue that you know the her mech actually has. Um, and again, when I think mech warrior, that's the kind of like bodysuit I think of. You know, if you wanted to take it into the the modern era instead of like you know being about naked in the cockpit, yeah, that's what I think of. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe not the jumpsuit like that, but like Under Armour would go a long way with it. I also like the boots too. They have that uh like that Lavenstein picture you're looking at yeah. that detail on it, yeah, kind of the same vibe. So it makes me wonder if like Matt maybe before he actually did draw this up, like actually do his homework. Looked at the other other examples mm-hmm. from came before. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm ashamed. It's not. I'm a little upset. It's not the uh, original Battle Cobra that they retconned. <laughs> you know, it, it realistically it yeah. wouldn't have mattered. I would have gotten in paint and try an area of those as a yeah. joke. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I I really love this this Battle Cobra a lot and the Mech Warrior a lot. And you know what, I that rifle, I think it looks pretty damn cool. <laughs> Yeah, did, did, did they say, do you know, do you remember if, if for that, that color play, did they say what kind of weapon she was holding? They might have, um, but I do recognize that rifle. I think it was a laser rifle mm-hmm. that was depicted in 2nd Edition or Companion. Yeah. yeah. It does show up in there, because this was around the time where um, I think 2nd Edition was starting to phase out, and they were going to bring in 3rd Edition. Yeah. And 2nd Edition and Companion, or mostly Companion, that art was kind of integrated with the clan field manuals at the time. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, this is actually part of the color inserts. There were other ones in there, but this one's my favorite. Sue me. <laughs> ah, yeah. Brad street. And actually funny enough, uh, Brad street, I think he was from Bloomington normal, which is where I went to college. Really? So it's kind of cool. Um, on the left is the scan from the free PDF that at the time fan pro put out of, their scan of the House Dobby and Source book. And they were 
saying they were going to do every single page, uh, or sorry, every single book, and then they didn't do it, and then they later released them for sale um, on their Catalyst store, but they still don't have, I believe, Merrick and Lao uh, available. So they have Davian is the free download, Karita, Steiner, Periphery, and Star League. And they, they had to edit them out to take, take out the unseen. Um, and so some images, if they can get away with it, they'll just take out the unseen. And then other images, they'll just remove the image entirely. Um, but these, these really stand out to me because um, they might have driven them at the same time, but just their appearance. And I mean, that can't be the right year, though, right? Because 1984 for the House Diving Source book. Yeah, I think it was 88. 88 that yeah. was a typo. The so, other thing was, too, I didn't actually have the book, which is why I put page on them. Yeah. Well, the other problem is I'm not sure what page it's in because in that version that they released, they removed the page um, number. Oh, yeah, they did. Um, and it, it was annoying because it, it opens up full screen on, on its own, which is annoying. But anyway, um, what really stands out to, to me about these images is one with the infantry armor I think is really cool. Um, it's so different from what we normally see. Um, you know, it's probably some really advanced respirator and, and breathing equipment. So that's, that's really neat. Again, this would be awesome to see as like an actual 25 or 28 millimeter. Um, you can, I don't know if you can hear my other cat in the background, Stormy running around. She's got the zoomies. She's losing it. Um, but in the periphery source book, again, you have this futuristic city, this architecture and building design that you haven't seen anywhere else before. Um, you know, what would it be like to actually live in that city? That's very cool to me. Um, I, I definitely love that you somehow have this mixture of these cobblestones, which is this, you know, old school building material that, you know, lasts a long time. And then behind it, you have this super futuristic building. And so you're marrying these fantasy and science fiction elements, which I think is, is really, it just something about that, like sort of taps into what Battletech was like. And then when you come over to the Dobbin source book, the Swiftwind scout car, um, how moody and evocative that scene is. It takes place in a real setting. You know, at some plant, there's a dirt road. It's by a hillside. You've got some trees with, with, with leaves on it and some not, some random vegetation. You also have the reflection of the bare trees in the Swiftwind Scout car window. Um, you know, it's just, it, it feels like it occupies a real space. Uh, and that's really cool. You know, maybe they're scouting. Maybe it's some picket line. Uh, it's it's really neat. I, I I really dig it, and it's uh, yeah, it's something that I again I, I don't really see in a lot yeah. of the modern art. Brad Street and Lobenstein had this this knack for I I think they when they were probably maybe wise men or one of them like described what the universe was like when they were explaining Mad Max and that. Yeah. Um, I feel like they kind of had enough of imagination to understand that. Not every planet is going to look like Terra yeah. and its representation. Yeah. Like, and you know, not everything is going to look like cultures that we see today, like the way buildings are made. Yeah. Like in, in one of our episodes, we were talking about like glazing the windows on your union. We yeah, were yeah. talking about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like what would something like a vault door look like on one planet? on like yeah. another planet, you yeah. know, because that's not something you can easily transport between others. So going back on like your cobblestone on the bottom you know, maybe it was, it's better for them to do that because it's somehow like... Yeah, like, you, you use the materials you've got. Yeah, yeah. Like if you have a large population center, yeah, you'll have machine shops and everything else. But if you have a relatively small population center without a lot of industry, yeah, I mean, you're probably splitting woods by hand and using hand tools or you've got a blacksmith. It's probably a much different vibe depending on where you're at in the universe. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's easy to get the gear there, which is why, you know, yeah. you have the soldiers looking the same in both images, which, yeah. is, which is really neat. Um, but, you know, hey, lugging all that cobblestone and everything, yeah. <laughs> that'd yeah. be a little rough. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, I really do like the infantry armor, <laughs> the cone infantry armor. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. I really kind of wish that that kind of showed itself outside of this book, like it could have been a thing. Well, I mean, I, I'm trying to remember if if some of the artwork in the the personal equipment section of the original 3026, I think there is an infantry, I think it's an infantry woman with a helmet like this. And so she has 
it's not quite the same shape, but it's this big projecting glass faceplate, mm -hmm. and the bottom kind of opens up like mandibles uh, on like a lobster. Huh. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, 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 it something kind of similar showed up elsewhere, but you know, it's very very cool. And again, it's that look in the future that uh, seems to be missing. Um, and yeah, it's definitely very very neat. The future of the eighties. <laughs> well. What We're, more can be said, right? Yeah, we got Jim Holloway, another well, incompetent artist. And we, we grabbed a couple of these images um, from the Art of Battletech Tumblr, and so they they were upscaled, uh, and so it's very, very awesome they did that because, yeah, man, I mean, what more can be said than this charging archer, the, the infantrymen panicking like crazy, the missiles firing, you know, off, and then, you know, in the background... Lighting or some sort of explosions in the background. Orange and blue. Orange and blue. Yeah, it's just, man, I mean, you can't. God, it's so fucking good. It's pretty clear where the cockpit's at, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do like it at the bottom, though, on the newer one. Yes, yeah. That's yeah. where it needs to be. I, I like that. Um, I like uh, the little, like the, you can see the civilians at the bottom right of the image, like running in the background. Mm -hmm. I do like that. Um, but yeah, like I, I like the um, the these missiles are the same ones on the Aerotech box. Oh, I yeah, do yeah, like yeah. some of the consistency between the covers of well, that. And Holloway did that one too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I also um, the camouflage on it. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the decision of Thunder Rift. Yeah, Holloway did that cover as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's the same camo on the wrecked Battlemaster in on the cover of Battle Troops. Mm -hmm. And I think it also showed up in uh, Shrapnel, uh, the original Shrapnel book, um, one of the mechs in that. I think it was a Marauder. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, you can't, I mean, that, that cover of City Tech is just, oh, man, chef's kiss. <laughs> you got the tiny little stoplight in the background. Too. Yeah. They told him to go. He's going. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it may, it, the only thing that might be better than this one is the back cover of City Tech with a stalker <laughs> busting through the wall. I actually painted... Um, the second sculpt stalker like that. And uh, yeah, man, it's so good. It says Holloway on the building in the background. Yeah, it's so good, man. It's so good. Yeah, it's just it's just phenomenal. You can even see, you know, spots that are kind of reflective, like the missile launcher, um, the the dudes jumping away, you know, getting out of, out As of the you way. Would. It's just it's so good. It's so good. You know, here comes this giant ass mech bust into the wall and what do you do but run it's yeah it's phenomenal it's phenomenal i like the chrome yeah the chrome look of everything too yeah like light sources like the sodium lights from mm -hmm. the city bouncing off of the mech yeah it's great god it's so good the the beams sticking out of the wall and everything yeah. Oh man, that tank right below it though. Those rocks are gonna. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's done. It's He's done. done. He knows it. Yeah. That's probably the crew. And he jumped out of it. They're like, yeah. forget this. Yeah. We don't get paid enough to die. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes. So I think Fox's teeth was maybe the third thing they made for Battletech. I want to say it was. Well, it was Battle. It was Battle Droids, and then it was Battletech Second Edition, and then after that came. Tales of the Black Widow and Fox's Teeth. Um, and so this image and the image after it, uh, I grabbed off of the uh, Jim Holloway uh, fan group on Facebook. And so the person who shared this, I think this is actually the print um, that he bought from Holloway. Or maybe he got it from Fossa. But it's just, to me, this is great. It, you know, again, you have... And this is something that's, that's been missing from modern Battletech cover art is you have the people front and center in the war zone. And yes, I mean, it's a battle mech that's blown out and destroyed behind them. But again, like having people, uh, I think is really important. Um, I mean, you see these giant shell casings, their armor, the helmets, I mean, the helmets especially, like again, that what's missing, like wouldn't it be great to have these in 25 or 28 millimeter um, but yeah, that design I think is just really fantastic. And the smoke and dust rising from the battlefield, 
It's just, yeah, I, this is just great. The tank crushed under the arm. Yeah. Came off of the battle mech. It's so good. It's that, so good. I think you could see the guy's helmet. Yeah, sitting there. there yeah. yeah, sitting there on the tank. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. And this this image after it. So from what I understand, like this was maybe on the back of some editions of Fox's Teeth. Um, again, this was picked up from that that website, that, that Facebook group. You know, it is Holloway. I'm assuming it was at the same time because these soldiers have the same types of helmets. Um, obviously, we have, you know, equipment like this sort of four-legged hauler mech. Um, you know, this is not stuff that has shown up in the game as far as I know. But this was also before a lot of stuff was set down as canon. But mm -hmm. just sort of the, the middle of the action, the fighting... Yeah, to me this is this is great. This is what you know the front lines look like um, when there's an invasion. It's just it's great. Yeah, it's like they had an encampment there because you got the little Playboy magazine. See, of course, right? The bottom. <laughs> yeah. But now this this is not on the back of my copy of Fox's Teeth. You know, my copy of Fox's Teeth has the unit roster. Um, so maybe this was in Europe or something. Maybe it was it was made but never used. Uh, yeah, I just I don't really know. But I think this is this is. The Shadowhawk jumping in the background too. Yeah, this it's is really awesome. Nice. Yeah, getting some Megatron vibes out of, out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. Ah, okay. So yeah, so um, on the left is um, that's actually from I think it's page one hundred sixty seven of the Field Manual Periphery. Um, for me, you know this this Colonial Marshal on his Mech Marshal. Um, is very very cool. It, this sort of this quiet moment after a battle. It's raining. Um, just trying to get some fresh air and probably cool down from from the middle of the fight because you can see the machine guns and the chest are still smoking. Mm -hmm. um, it's art like this that I again I also think is kind of missing from a lot of of more modern art. Just the moodiness, the quietness, the solitude. The you know it's a periphery backwater and um, yeah it's for me it it really it speaks to me you know you can kind of smell the rain on a rainy day you can pick it up. There's something about a black and white pencil sketch like this too. Yeah, yeah, that and really it, stands out. Again, you have the lighting effects because you can see where the the cover of the armor plates over the missile launcher. Mm -hmm. You know it that parts in shadow stuff like that. The non-metal metal effect. Of uh, the machine guns, you know the way the light reflects off the the metal, yeah. the barrels. It's really cool. It's you really, could really you cool. can see the chrome in uh, black and white. Yeah, <laughs> it's really fantastic stuff. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful image. And then of course the ones on the right. Yeah, there, there's a reason I picked these. I I don't know who actually drew them. I put a post on the forums to see if I could find out because there, there's three names listed. I have them on here. It's Doug Anderson, Mike Jackson, and Chris Muller. I want to say these are quick sketches from Mike Jackson, mm -hmm. only because I have a bias towards him. Um, but if you look at the Zeus and even the Jaeger mech um, and the uh, Hunchback, did I put them on there? Yeah, yeah the yeah, Hunchback. Yeah. Yeah. They look pretty damn similar to a lot of the art that he has. Um, and even even the way like the lighting is on them, um, but the the main thing that I do like about these standees is they all stand out different from each other, mm -hmm. and you can see even at the scale of like how small they are, or like even in the introduction of BattleTech book where they like kind of blow them up a little bit, you can see the individual panels and details on them. Yeah, and their their stances are actually. Because when I imagine a battle mech moving, I don't imagine like very, some very stiff. Yeah. yeah, like the very stiff movement representation we have. Right, the Mac Warrior Four really ruined it. Yeah, you know, and at least like with Mac Warrior Three and Mac Warrior Two, it was within the limitations of the game, mm -hmm. but they at least made up for that in creating the simulator feel yeah. that it gives off. Um, but the way I I depict these moving, not even like Gundam movement, um, but I, I imagine like a soldier with 
like heavy armor, you know, like trying to move across the battlefield. So like you still have that flexibility, but you know, there's there's just that weight to your movement yeah. that slows you down, and these standees kind of give that off. Well, and you you know what? One of the funny things too that I think about is, you know, here they were in 1996, flirting with redesigning you know, the depictions of the Max, and it it didn't stick. You know, we didn't we didn't get these, you know, in, in TROs, and we didn't get these in mm-hmm. miniature form. But uh, yeah, I mean, they definitely do look really cool. You know, Baltic has has tried to to redesign stuff in the past. And look at the left arm on the Hermes. The Hermes too. Oh yeah, yeah. It looks sick, doesn't it? It's amazing. And then you use it in the board game. You're like, oh man, this is lame. <laughs> <laughs> but like the commando looks great. Quick draw. Yeah, and I mean assassin obviously because I'm I'm real biased towards that. But if I had to pick, probably my favorite ones of those standees, like the Cyclops really stands out a lot mm-hmm. because of the it, almost the crystal ball that it has for its so, cockpit. Yeah. It, it's really it it look it just looks so damn cool, and you know like I said with the Zeus something like with that box and just making them blue. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what it is, um, but the dynamic poses are really cool too. Like the Jenner, it it looks speedy, Definitely. especially yeah. the spider. Like it looks like it it jumps and it's speedy. You know, um, the cicada like it it's a big clunky machine, but you could tell it moves. The assassin you could tell it moves. Mm-hmm. Um, or the way it moves, I should say. And I, I really do love the Stancity Enforcer, too. And I know you like the Enforcer a lot. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. Um, but, yeah, man, like, they, I, I know these standees in the nostalgia scale, like, they're way out there for me. But, again, like, whoever made those, like, the, it just, it really stands out to me, and that's what grit me into this game. Mm. So, yeah, kudos to you. Ah, that's the end. <laughs> we had to put that in as the end. Closing, closing on the Laubenstein one. Yeah, that's from the uh, the back of the inside cover of uh, the Periphery source book. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Can't go wrong with, with Laubenstein. No, you can't. So th- this is definitely going to be a thing. This is going to be a more than one part episode. Um, for, again, we... We want comments. We want to know art that stands out to you so we can not necessarily review it, but just comment on it. You know, what what sticks out to us. Mm. A lot of the art in this particular episode was the art that essentially drew us into the game and resonated with us. Um, I can I can say a lot of it was definitely the stuff Adam picked out, it, it's kind of weird when you look at it because yours is almost like a total different era than mine. Well, it is, yeah. I mean, a lot of the stuff that, that really stuck with me um, was from some of the books that I first grabbed and first got a chance to read, uh, which also happened to be some of the first books that they released. Uh, so, yeah, it, it really does mean a lot to me to see that kind of stuff and, like, why I like it. Uh, yeah. yeah. I tried every ounce of my being. To avoid just pulling everything from the card game. Well, there's a lot of good stuff in that card game. There really is. I mean, we you can have we could probably have a whole episode on that by itself. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of these artists we talked about, um, especially Mike Jackson, he's had a lot of pieces in that card game. You know, and that, I only showed one of them. <laughs> yeah. You know, look before you leap was another good one. Um, now that I think of it. He wasn't the one that drew it up, but we should have that uh, the Atlas getting or the uh, what is it the Warhawk getting punched out by the Atlas. Oh yeah, well there's a whole lot of stuff that we can uh, dedicate to uh, Franz Vowinkel. Oh or, yeah, or Vowinkel. Um, I don't know if he's done anything recent for the game. I don't think he has, but he used to do a lot of cover art and a lot of interior stuff. Um, people give him shit because he did the Yeoman from Tarot 3060. Oh, yeah. But it's like, I mean, that's what, I think it's probably what they wanted. And it just, it, it, it's exactly what it it was designed to be. Um, someone said, like, he just doesn't have a good technical mind. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I know. Like, if you look at, let's look at all these great examples that he's done. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll have to chip our way through this. I mean, there's a lot of good art to be used. I mean, and I mean, there's, there's good art coming out now, but I think it's, it's frustrating to uh, see players be so dismissive of Battletech art and to, to clearly miss what's come before 
and just cherry pick you know, the worst examples or, or um, some of the art off of the, like the something awful articles that I showed yeah. you. Like, okay, yeah, that's what you grab. You know, of course you're like, oh man, Battletech's terrible. It, it, there's, it's clearly, that's just not true. Yeah, well, what really did it, because um, I, I know you brought up Ale Clan, the source book. Mm -hmm. Like, what really did it for me, like that, that kind of made me think about the old art that I like too. Um, you know, after you presented the that idea to me, but thinking back on Ill Clan, the only one that stood out in that book, and it's a really good piece, is the I think it's towards the middle of the book with the Chabrana yeah. getting what is it like run over by a tank or something? Yeah, like that. Oh, oh, that scene, yeah, um, from uh, Hour of the Wolf. I, I mean, one of the things that's frustrating is some of the best artwork from Ill Clan was reused from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. which is which is frustrating for people to be like oh look, they could finally they could finally pay for competent artists and it's like dude half this artwork that you like yeah. is reused what are you talking about it's like they could just they're just cut and pasting mech models and and, and that's it, it, the old art yeah a lot of it's dated you know i i can agree with that but the images had life and they wanted, you wanted to live in that universe. Mm -hmm. Battletech was not completely about, like, yeah, the game is built around the battle mech. But the game, it's unfair to the history of the game and a lot of the effort the artists put in to breathe life into it. Yeah. You know, and it, Ill Clan is almost like just mech picture after mech picture after mech picture and they're all doing the same thing they're all just moving one direction and firing some some weapons you know and that the 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 book was a letdown i'll just i'll yeah. leave it at that it was a real letdown yeah. um but we're you know we wanted to do more of a a positive episode on you know the, the old art that sticks out to us and we are asking you the memory core community <laughs> well, we're we're almost at 300 subscribers. So we, that, we went over. We, we went did. over. Oh damn! So we there actually did. there actually is a community now. There is there is a community, and they're not a bunch of people with pitchforks. Yeah, <laughs> fire and pitchforks. Yeah, <laughs> the memory core rioters. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, guys, that's that's about it. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm not sure what we're gonna do next. I mean, we keep talking about Wars of Reaving. We probably should sit down and do it because um, we really, really do enjoy that book. Um, we needed, essentially, we needed a break. Yeah, we really did because Ill Clan was such a letdown that even going back for me and reading Wars of Reaving, um, it, it's kind of a slog for me, and I think it's unfair for the book because I've just been so worn out. Like just yeah, I've had to take a break from a lot of BattleTech stuff. Um, I could definitely play. We've been playing. But yeah, we've been playing. But yeah, like. Um, <laughs> You know, reading the novels and other things, I've definitely had to take a step back. I'm like, oh, okay, I need to need to meh, take a yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is this is one of those things. Like, this is some of the stuff that we love. Um, we hope you guys appreciate it. We hope if you're reading or watching this, um, reading this, yeah, I hope you enjoy reading this. Um, <laughs> if you guys are watching this, I, I hope you get get a new appreciation for what's come before, and maybe look at some of the old artwork differently. Um, you know, some of the stuff is available, you know, online uh, you can get. And I think, oddly enough, we did not include a lot of the unseen in this. So some of this artwork is still present in some of the books that you can get. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, we focused on a lot of the, the mood yeah. the old stuff had. And I think that, I don't think it was, it wasn't done on accident. Right, right. It was not done on accident. You know, the same way I explained how I found out how much I actually liked Mike Jackson in, yeah. in this adventure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just subconsciously, like, I, I think we all look for, like, that that mood. Yeah. You know? Um, but, yeah, like, let us know. Yeah, we, I, we really do mean it. We, we want to include it. We want to talk about it. What are some of your favorite examples of artwork? And even if it's something that we don't like... You know, we definitely want to hear why you like it so we can include it and we can talk about it. Um, you know, new, old, whatever. You know, we'd like to hear it. Maybe even some of the fan stuff, if, if fans are willing to have their art shown. Yeah, I, I'd be up for that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of good fan artists out there. There are. I have, I have some favorites. So I'd be, I'd be interested to see who, 
mm. who submits it, you know. Well, cool, guys. Well, hey, take care. It's the end of end of February, so hopefully we'll see you before the end of March. Okay, so next episode, kind of want to do my rant on Adam Steiner. Oh man, there's also there's also the uh, the Vlad Ward one. You can't see it, but I'm rubbing my hands together. Yeah, we had an idea for that one. Yeah. I think you guys will appreciate it. Yeah, but oh uh, yeah, stay tuned, everybody. Cool.